Hey there, Justin here at Elastic. I just read an article by my colleague Alex and I thought it was an amazing rundown of how to create an MCP server integrated with Elasticsearch to create a really slick, really comprehensive agentic AI example. He explains the three components of an MCP server and shows a great MCP framework with Python to get his ideas up and running with relatively little code. I want to go over Alex's article with you and show you the code he wrote to interact with Elasticsearch and provide custom tools to Anthropic's Claude LLM. This code searches data with dynamic queries to consume and interpret mobility data connected from our Apple smartwatches and phones. There are three components of an MCP server we must build out. The resources, the tools, and the prompts. The resource component can be thought of as a source of truth for the LLM. Resources are created and used to provide context by exposing your data directly to the LLM. Much like get endpoints and REST APIs, the resource components we build retrieve data without modification and have an actual URA format. An example such as health steps latest would provide the assumption of the most recent step records. Tools are the functions you write that the LLM can choose to call to accomplish their goals. These enable action and computation essential for complex queries and analyses. We could think of these as post endpoints in REST APIs. They execute operations and can have side effects. They can accept structured parameters and perform dynamic logic at the time of execution. This gives us active processing and data manipulation, not just data retrieval. You can see how this far outperforms simply passing queries and answer context to an LLM. Lastly, we have prompts, which can be thought of as maps or playbooks for our LLMs to perform. They provide reusable command templates for common tasks, which differs from traditional LLM prompts combining user input with task instructions. When defined within our MCP framework, FastMCP, they become registered templates that appear as slash commands. As an example, slash daily report triggers a pre-configured analysis workflow of our steps taken for the last day. Together, these three components, or primitives, form a complete system for connecting LLMs to external functionality. Okay, so enough talking. Let's look at some code. First, I'll make sure I've cloned down the repository that went along with the article. I'll navigate into the repo. And with UV, I'll initialize a project. Then I'll create and activate a virtual environment. I'll install the required libraries for this project. And then I'll set my environment variable for my API key. Our MCP server needs data to interact with. We can use the Python script ingest data.py written by Alex to add sample Apple Watch data if you don't have your own. First, I want to go over the imports and constants I'm setting up for the MCP server based on the fast MCP framework. You'll see that I'll be using the Pydantic library to validate my query entries to ensure that I can call my tools for the LLM. I'm also including the Elasticsearch Python client to query our data and an async context manager to handle the Elasticsearch client connection lifecycle. We'll also import the FastMCP class to create our instance of our MCP server. We'll need a connection to our Elasticsearch instance, which can be in the cloud or local, and we'll need an API key to gain access. Lastly, we'll set our index in Elasticsearch to the name Apple Health Steps. We have a Pydantic class set up to validate the start date, end date, and an aggregation time window I want to accept for my tool functions. As soon as I create an object from this class, these validators will be automatically run against the arguments and any validation errors will be raised before the function accepting this class object starts. It'll check to make sure our input dates are of the correct format and only accept hourly, daily, weekly, and monthly as our aggregation windows. I'll define an Elasticsearch client connection needed to perform queries. This will be called in my tooling as well. Notice that the client is named async Elasticsearch, as opposed to our normal synchronous instantiator. An MCP server by nature should be asynchronous, as they are designed to handle long-running tasks and real-time updates efficiently through asynchronous mechanisms like server sent events. SSE allows MCP servers to stream events to clients, and we don't want any blocking to happen for this to be as real-time as possible. And here is my Elasticsearch query function. This accepts a query in the form of a Python dictionary, sends the query along with the index name to our Elasticsearch instance, 
and returns the raw response if successful. Now that we have our initializations and helper functions covered, let's start with the MCP resources. Let's take note of a couple things. You'll see the decorator mcp.resource with a URI string in parenthesis. This notifies the MCP server to use this as a resource. The function get latest steps will do just that. Query our Elasticsearch instance for the latest step records, specifically the last 10 entries. We'll generate our query, use our query Elasticsearch helper function to retrieve results, then create a formatted list of those results. We'll lastly return the results as a nicely formatted JSON object. Now let's dig into creating a tool function for our LLMs to use. Notice the decorator mcp.tool up top. This notifies our MCP server that this is a function that should be made available to our LLM. Our function query step data receives our pydantic query step data params object as an argument, so you know the data that we'll be working with is valid. This is a bit of a large function, as it has a lot of things to check, such as start date, end date, any aggregation we might want, and if we want to filter by device. So I broke these specific pieces into smaller sub-functions for readability. For example, I created a helper function to build a query for Elasticsearch. It parses through the arguments and builds the query based on what was passed to the function. A fully formed Elasticsearch query object is passed back to the main query steps data function and is used to fetch the specified data. After we receive our data back from Elasticsearch, we'll take a few actions based off what the results are and what was requested. If we have an aggregation argument, we'll run an aggregation processor on the results. Otherwise, we'll process the results as normal. Lastly, we'll return all of the data processed and nicely packaged with any original aggregation, total number of records returned, the actual processed results, and the original query. That's more than enough context for the LLM to make a content and context-rich response. And what's even cooler, this data has been processed and refined on top of a simple query based on the user's input. The parameters were created by the LLM as it saw fit. Neat. It's important to note that this tool is dynamically driven. Its results require an argument passed to it. When we want purely static data with no arguments passed, we use the resource decorator as I showed before. Okay, now let's check out the last component of this MCP server, the prompt. A prompt is exactly what you think it is if you've worked on a RAG application before. It's a set of instructions, clarifications, and restrictions given to the LLM. This one with the mcp.prompt decorator is called daily report. It also includes a data parameter. If a date is provided by the user for a specific daily report date, then the prompt is returned requesting data for a certain date. If no date is provided, then it will return step info for today's date so far. That's pretty cool. When a user requests in natural language, can I have a daily report for June 9th, 2025, the LLM will know to read this prompt. Think of this as a recipe book or a flowchart for them to read and follow for this specific instance. You'll then see it choose a tool that we provide, spoiler alert, It'll be query step data and follow the instructions from the prompt with that specific data. Okay, now that we've set up our three components, let's check them out with a tool called the MCP Inspector. I'll call MCP Dev and my file AppleWatchMCP.py. This will start the inspection server and I'll navigate to the link with a pre filled authentication. Now I'll click on Connect and I can see three tabs for resources, prompts, and tools. This is great for testing out our individual functions by entering different parameters and viewing the results. You can enter arguments into your tools and view the results back from Elasticsearch without having to go through your LLM. Okay, so I'm happy with the functionality that we've created so far. So I'm going to register the MCP server with my Claude Desktop application. Make sure you have Claude Desktop installed before moving forward with me. I'll run the command mcp install apple watch mcp.py dash dash name apple health steps. This registers the apple health mcp server with cloud desktop and includes the commands with path arguments and the fully pathed server file. 
your command script may differ slightly based off of your individual pathing and location of UV. Now I'll restart my cloud desktop. You should see our MCP server available under the Search and Tools button in the chat text window. We can start testing it out by asking Claude some questions about our most recent activity. I'll ask, what was the summary of activity of my last recorded day of steps? And there we go. Claude is directly interacting with my MCP server by calling a tool to retrieve the information I requested. Let's try running a prompt I created. Let's enter slash trend analysis. So it read the prompt for trend analysis, then got my most recent steps, then decided to call query step data with date parameters to capture the entire amount of records. Now it appears that it's building out a full-blown visualization with React. That's amazing. Well now, as you've seen, MCP servers unlock a whole new way to interface LLMs with real-time data. Whether you're connecting to business dashboards, internal tools, search indices, or sensor data like we did here, MCP gives you a structured and scalable framework to do it cleanly. Once you've defined your resources, tools, and prompts, you've essentially built an API for your LLM, one that's modular, inspectable, and ready to grow. It's also not just about one use case. We can transform how we think about AI integration across any domain. What functionalities and capabilities will you add to your MCP server? Let us know at Elastic and share the excitement. If you have any questions about this code base or about Elastic in general, feel free to drop a comment here or head to our Discuss forum or Slack channel. We're always there to chat code and data solutions. Also, check out the Elastic Search Lab site for new and exciting articles on Elastic's features and integrations with the latest technologies. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.